I forgot to mention, we are live on Facebook. I think a few people are watching on Facebook. So hi everyone that's watching, either on Facebook or uh, later on on YouTube. Uh, thank you for joining us. So we're live streaming. Thank you. 
not always so that we carry the gospel into the middle of the church as a reminder that Jesus is always so close to us. <coughs> alleluia, alleluia, I have called you friends, says the Lord, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons. And kneeling before him, she asked a favour of him, and he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Declare that these two sons of mine will sit, one at your right hand, and one at your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am allowed to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared for my, by my father. When the ten heard it, they were angry with the two brothers. But Jesus called to them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you. But whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Then may I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I'm sure all the cameras that you can see me watching at home. I found during the lockdown that when I read the scriptures and the stories of the lives of the saints, they have seemed to me to be in high definition because of the times that we're living in. Lockdown and the experience of the pandemic has highlighted to me how comfortable my life was before, how I was largely untroubled. So when I hear the readings about persecution and suffering, not giving in to despair, they now seem to be in high definition, instead of the grainy black and white that they were to me before. Christianity as a faith was born in suffering. We worship a suffering saviour, and therefore our faith seems all the more, to me at least, relevant. Our patron saint here at Barbara, James, the son of Zebedee and brother of John, is no exception. James knew what it was to have his life totally turned upside down. At the call of Jesus, he and his brother left their fishing nets and their father and followed Jesus, not knowing where they were going. They left their entire way of life, their family business, to start something completely new with Jesus. Many people during lockdown have had to completely reinvent themselves and their businesses. We've had to learn how to use new tools. I don't know about you, but I've never heard of Zoom before all this stuff happened. We've had to find new ways of doing things. James, our patron, has been there. He stepped out into the unknown with Jesus. They didn't know how they would eat, make money, where they would stay, what they would be able to do. But the call of Jesus was so strong, they trusted in him. We might feel adrift. We might feel tempted to despair. I know I have on occasion these last few months. But we put our hands into the hand of God and we trust that God will guide us forwards. Paul writes about this in his second letter to the Corinthians, we heard. How bright and high definition these words seem now. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. James entrusted his whole life, his livelihood to God. Might we do the same? Now I've put on the front of the order of service today an image of a painting of St. James by the artist El Greco. St. 
James is painted as a pilgrim, attentive to the mystery, with nothing but a staff and empty hands. One gift of the lockdown has been a return to simplicity. Some people have told me that they've been reminded of their childhood in the 50s and 60s. When I asked Malcolm, who was on placement with us, what he had learned during the lockdown, he said, well, we can't take anything for granted, and we must appreciate what we have in the here and now, because everything can change in the blink of an eye. St James is the patron saint of pilgrims, and when a pilgrim sets out on a journey, they need to travel light. You can't drag a whole lot of baggage with you on a pilgrimage. Indeed, in some respects, a pilgrimage is metaphorically a letting go of all the baggage of life, bit by bit. I hope that as we emerge into a new way of being, that we might be able to let go of some of that baggage that has been dragging us down. Many of you will have been able to have a good clear out at home during the lockdown. There is something powerful about driving to the charity shop and letting go of those things that you no longer need. It can even help with your mental health. I wonder whether as a church we have been carrying some baggage that we really need to let go of. What have we lost during these last four months that needs to remain lost? When we aren't carrying too much baggage, we are able to move far more nimbly forwards. We are able to adapt to change. We need to see ourselves as pilgrims together on this journey. We need to travel light, and we need to trust our guide Jesus as we follow him into the unknown. I am reminded of that beautiful quotation of Minnie Haskins, which was shared by King George VI in his 1939 Christmas message. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. So today, together, we put our hand into the hand of God, trusting in him for our shared future. Pilgrims on a journey, walking alongside St James, as he followed his Lord, with nothing but a staff in his hand, attentive to the mystery. Amen. So please stand as you are able as we declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of the heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He is sent into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit on the earth and come to pray. Jesus, the Son of Man, came not to be served, but to serve, and to save us from our sins. Let us bring to him now the needs of our world, in faith that he will hear our prayers, and use them in the service of those for whom we pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for your church and for her leaders. 
We pray for all churches as they seek to reach people in new ways. Praying for our own churches as we both continue to meet remotely and as we reopen our buildings for public worship. Through your power and grace, let the good news of love and redemption extend to more and more people so that voices of praise and thanksgiving are heard throughout the world to the glory of God. Lord, in your mercy, Lord Jesus, we pray for the leaders of the nations. Let them know that with power and honour come responsibility and accountability. May those who govern do so for the good of all their people and with the respect and gentleness you show to those who are most weak and vulnerable. We pray for all governments managing the response to the pandemic and pray especially for all involved in the research to find a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray for the life of our own community, especially for all those who hold positions of responsibility as employers, as administrators of the law, and as teachers, facing very difficult decisions and responsibility for their people. As you serve those who came to you, so they, may they serve those who depend on them for a livelihood for justice or for education. We pray for all those whose work situation is uncertain and those struggling to keep their businesses afloat. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Lord Jesus, we pray for all those who suffer pain and illness, those who are anxious or bereaved, and for those whose journey in this life is ending. We pray especially by name for Wyatt and Garrett Ruthven, Barbara Needham, Veronica Blackwell, Margaret Gilmore, Luke Firth, Sandra Meller, Chloe Parks, Betty Wood, George Naylor, Maureen Pearson, Arthur Stamper, Elizabeth Hamilton, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, Audrey, and the Reverend David Hull. Let them know that just as you share in the pain and suffering of life, so will they share in your healing and, at this life's end, in your resurrection into the glory of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we come to time of lament. Um, um, just to explain to those watching at home, <laughs> I'm going to move to the candle stand now to light candles in memory of those that have died. So I'm just going to walk over to there so you won't be able to see me on the screen. <laughs> we have all lost many things during the pandemic. And many of us are still grieving lost time with loved ones, missed birthdays, anniversaries, weddings and celebrations, lost work and income. Some of us have declined in health and mental health. In a moment of quiet, we lay our sadness before God, knowing that He knows and praying for His presence with us. Many have also died during this time of COVID-19, but also of other conditions as well, and many in our own community. So we take a moment to remember all who have died during the pandemic. And we remember especially by name, Alice Metzler. Sheila Dixon. Iris Pepin, Margaret Wilson, 
a living witness to all of the way that leads to heaven.
During this difficult time when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church, meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity, a generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, here's how you can help. 